I went there as a water boy, working for an old fella by the name of Peter Cox. The year was 1932. George Campbell was 15 years old. I gave the men water, and I would break wood, find wood in the woods to have a nice hot fire for the men to sit around a big bow for lunch. Have a nice hot fire for them. That's the only time a man had a chance to sit down. Well, the laborers could sit down for lunch, but apparently there was no rest for George. When I was a water boy, you see, Devil Biss, that was the main man for Washington Suburban. He pulled up on the job one day. I was sitting down. And uh, <laughs> Devil Biss asked Peter Cox, who is that fellow sitting there? For him. That's what Peter, that's what uh, uh, Devil Bit said, see, for him. So Peter Cox told me, he said, no, you can't, you can't for that boy. He said, that's my water boy. He said, and uh, he's a good worker. <laughs> but Devil Bit wanted to follow me right then. George wasn't fired. In fact, he moved up the ladder from water boy to laborer, but the work was backbreaking. Washington Suburban didn't have no machinery. I think they had about three trucks. Regardless what size line that was going in, we all done that by hand. And uh, it, was, it was rough. Back in that day, we was working five and a half days a week. 25 cents an hour. I get paid with $13 and a half. And I'm telling you, it, it was rough. I decided a whole lots of times, I'm gonna leave this place. But I don't know why I stayed there. Tell you the truth, I can't even figure out why I did stay there. <laughs> but I'm so glad I did, because after the man found out that I knew something else beside digging a ditch, why my, as the boy said, the work got much easier. I knew how to work on them little motors. And I could keep them pumps running. And after the old man Cox found out that I could work on them motors, he, I didn't do no more ditch work. Got yourself a promotion. That's right. <laughs> George put in a decade at WSSC. But by the early 1940s, the Navy needed George. The United States had entered World War II. A little more than a year later, George was out of the Navy. He did a brief stint with High's Ice Cream before ending up back at Washington Suburban, as he calls it. You remember looking that young? <laughs> <laughs> By the early 60s, George's longtime friend Remus Lyles, who was 14 years his junior, had joined Washington Suburban. Both men, despite knowledge and experience, were limited in what they could do with the commission. You it had to be hard as a laborer. All black guys in there, hard, straight out as labor. They couldn't, none of them come off the street from didn't matter how much education you had. They couldn't none of them come off the street and be hired as a foreman. Some of the things that, the stuff that we had to accept on jobs and everything, it wasn't just at WSSC. It was around the whole country. We couldn't do nothing about it, but we just waited for the opportunity. An opportunity that finally came thanks to Chief Engineer and General Manager Robert McLeod. McLeod called a meeting, and I was up at the office. He called all the white foremans and everybody, everybody come in there. He said, it's going to be a change today. And if you don't like it, you can hit the, hit the road. And he's <laughs> changed, and no more of this. Uh, uh, and he went and he said, we don't have any uh, blacks and engineers and different ones. He started 
right then and there. So you got to do promotions and everything. And he, that thing broke things wide open. You remember that day? Oh, yeah. Remus says changes were swift. Ed Wiseman was his boss at the time, a white man who all along wanted to promote Remus, but couldn't because Remus wasn't white. When they started accepting blacks as foremen and supervisors, well, Wiseman, first thing he did, he first, he, he made me equipment operator right away, and, 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 and in a year's time, he made me a foreman. Remus and George both moved on to positions traditionally held by white people. As supervisors, their philosophy was as simple as the golden rule. We both were labels at one time, and we both were treated unfairly in a lot of situations. So we made sure our men under us, when we were promoted to supervise and crew chiefs and foremen and whatever, the men under us wasn't treated like we were because we knew it wasn't fair. Memories of segregation decades ago, still vivid for Remus and George, not likely top of mind for many in 2018, prompting Remus to share this message with WSSC's employees of today. And appreciate all the people that went before them and they worked hard and how they made WSSC better. And WSSC is now, uh, it's one of the better places to work. And we're not talking for just a few years. George told me, he said, when, if you get a taste of this water, you're going to be here the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and to have a life spanning over 100 years, there has to be a secret. I said, it's no secret. I said, that 100 stole up on me, <laughs> just like It'll steal upon you if you're doing right, you know. So 